Welcome back to First Mover. Ripple announced last week that it acquired Swiss-based crypto custody provider Medico for $250 million. Joining us now to discuss is Ripple president Monica Long. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, Jen. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. Why don't we start off by setting the foundation here. Tell us about the acquisition and what it means for Ripple. Yes, so uh, just last week we announced that we acquired Medico for $250 million. Medico is the leading provider of custody solutions for enterprises. Uh, their, their customer base is some of the largest banks in the world. This fits really well with Ripple's core business, which, you know, since uh, 2014, 2015, Ripple's been the leader really pursuing enterprise crypto-based solutions with financial institutions. Uh, so bringing together the Medico team with Ripple, we're going to be able to provide uh, very highly secure custody solutions to our customers within our payment space, our liquidity hub base, and even our CBDC base. Yeah, I like that you brought up the CBDC angle. We spoke about the launch of the CBDC last week right here on the show. Now we're talking about Medico, you know, uh, with banks as customers. Does this have anything to do with your CBDC play? Uh, so uh, w within the CBDC uh, solution, you know, that we're serving central banks and their needs to tokenize their currencies. Um, and so uh, custody is, is a solution that's needed there. We really see custody as a cornerstone to the future of finance really being plugged into blockchain and crypto rails. Any kind of financial institution, whether it's a central bank or a bank or a payment company, they're all going to need a secure place to custody custody, their digital assets and tokens. Can you tell us anything about your plans for Medico after the acquisition? Medico has been around since 2015. They, they've been highly successful acquiring uh, lots of banks, primarily tier one banks as their customers. So they're going to continue to grow and uh, develop the business as they have been. So in, in a lot of ways, they'll be operating as they have been, uh, primarily based out of Switzerland. Um, but covering uh, covering the globe in terms of the customers they work with. Uh, in addition, we'll you know we'll work with Medico and we'll Medico's technology to bring their tech into um, our tech stacks in order to provide uh, custody solutions as part of our uh, our solutions for our customers. You know, I recently heard Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse talk about international expansion, you know, kind of echo some of the comments we've heard from other CEOs in the crypto space about, you know, moving away from the United States because of the regulatory landscape. Is this acquisition, you know, the first of many or the first on a journey for Ripple to start operating away from the U.S.? We're definitely seeing, I mean, in line with what you just mentioned as, as Brad's comments, we're definitely seeing a lot of opportunity and a lot of growth and expansion in the crypto space outside of the U.S. where there is more clarity. I mean, Europe is a great case study, a great example, um, get, bringing together 27 countries to agree on a common framework with MICA. Um, and Ripple's business, you know, across payments and our other offerings, uh, more than 90% of it or 95% of it is outside of the U.S. So we're meeting our customers where they are. This uh, acquisition of Medico based in Europe is another example of um, how we're continuing to grow and expand our team and our business outside the U.S. Can you maybe do a, a comparison for us? What, it, what has it been like going through this acquisition, working with um, a crypto company in the EU, dealing with EU regulators versus dealing with regulators here in the U.S.? Uh, so Medico is uh, our largest acquisition to date. Um, and so we're very pleased with how swiftly we were able to seize on the opportunity. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that much. Um, working with regulators in the U.S. Um, outside of acquisitions, but just more generally, um, you know, certainly we're proactive engaging the you know, various agencies that, that play in the world of finance to um, you know, educate and try to provide our perspective and clarity. Um, but, you know, in the U.S., it's a bit chaotic with all the different agencies and, and regulators uh, kind of in an in a alphabet soup um, where we feel we have a lot 
uh, we're seeing just a lot more progress, frankly, um, places like Europe and uh, Asia. You know, speaking of regulation here in the U.S., I think we have to ask you about the lawsuit. Uh, Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, recently said it's going to cost $200 million for, for Ripple when this lawsuit is said and done. Can you give us any updates on where we are with it? Uh, the, the case of Ripple and the SEC, I mean, this is really something that we see as, you know, we've been fighting on behalf of the whole industry. It's going to have a monumental impact on the whole industry. Um, the latest is that as of last fall, both the SEC and Ripple filed our motions for summary judgment. So the decision now will rest with the court. Um, and that we don't have any updates on timing. Unfortunately, we'll, I mean, we'll find out with the rest of the world uh, when the judge makes her decision. Are you expecting to hear something soon? I know I've seen um, reports and some speculation about possibly there could be a judgment soon. We're optimistic that that we'll, uh, we'll hear from the court this year. Um, don't have any more specifics on timing, um, but we're we're optimistic we'll hear within this year, and we're also very optimistic about you know our prospects and the the set of legal facts that are really on the side of Ripple in this case. You know, you said that you see this as almost fighting on behalf of the industry. And I wanted to ask you about fair notice. I know this is something from over a year ago now, but several crypto companies have attempted to use this fair notice defense against the SEC. And it seems that Ripple is the, the one that's really been able to move it forward. The judge strike down the SEC's move to um, get that thrown out. What, what do you think that means for the industry? I'm not. I'm not a legal expert, and I will defer to um, our chief legal officer, Stu Alderati, to comment more extensively on fair notice and the implications there. Um, we do know that the judge issued an order um, very recently that uh, that that pertained to you know which documents in the case would be kept under seal and which ones would not. Um, very importantly, at least in our view, uh, Bill Hinman's emails will be. Um, revealed, they'll be made public in the coming weeks. Um, and we think that's significant because uh, Bill Himmon, when he was acting uh, director of court fin at the SEC, he gave a very famous speech in 2018 where he, he said that he saw, or the SEC saw that Ether uh, did not look like a security because it had been sufficiently decentralized. And now we're going to, you know, through the revealing of his emails, we're going to get more insight into what went into that decision. Tell us a little bit more about these Hinman papers. I know we want to get more insight into what went into that decision, but once we get that insight, what could it mean for your case? Uh, it, it, you know, it's it's to be determined, you know, just uh, by the court, of course, what ultimately they will decide in the case. The, the ruling on the Hinman emails, we think, is certainly a win for transparency, uh, you know, where the crypto industry at large is really seeking clarity from the U.S. Uh, we think that this transparency will go a long way. And then ultimately, of course, the ruling in our case. All right. And lastly, Ripple has historically maintained distance from XRP, the token that powers some of the products that the XRP uh, the XRP has in the network. But with all the progress progress with the with the lawsuit, with all of these announcements, we've seen some price movement. Any reaction to XRP's rise this year? So uh, just to just to be clear, uh, Ripple's product, so primarily our, our flagship product in payments called on-demand liquidity, the way that product works is by facilitating payments and making the cost of payments uh, lower and making payments faster and more transparent. It uses XRP in that flow. So um, that, that's been a, a key part to how we've been able to improve upon cross-border payments. Uh, and so certainly we, you know, we look at other applications for the XRP ledger and the token XRP uh, within the world of financial services. And 
going back to you know what we uh, started the conversation with around Medico, we see Ripple having a lot of opportunity here to go from you know our payments offering and liquidity hub, even our work in CBDCs, to really be the leading player in crypto, providing the set of services that financial institutions need to take advantage of the efficiencies and the innovation in crypto and blockchain rails. Monica, thank you very much for joining us this morning. That was Ripple President Monica Long.